at this point, we will quickly go to the next um, item on our agenda, which is the impact of effective marketing on business growth and expansion. I'm very particularly interested in this session because I operate also in the media as well as PR and marketing communication space. And we've been talking so much about awareness. I want to believe that the panelists will help to do justice to this topic. The moderator for this panel is not a person than Madam Neka, and then the director of Workforce Group. Please can we put our hands together for her as she comes up uh, to take up our seat so that we can start up the session, which is going to run for 30 minutes only, which also includes questions and answer. And then this uh, particular panel will look at the concept to market ideology. We we'll also look at what you have to do to win and then with marketing. I'm very sure this is not conclusive without a discussion on artificial intelligence. Yesterday, we had an AI model or image that was singing. So we can imagine what AI also can do in terms of marketing, marketing communications, and of course, driving awareness uh, as the case is. And so we want to say a big thank you to Mada Ineka and then the Director of Workforce Group that will be uh, moderating this session. As the case might be, you might choose whatever part you want, whether in the edge or the middle, you know, it's all in your own purview, madam. And of course, uh, Mr. Tokumbo Omonubi, Head of Products uh, for Remita. Please put your hands together for him. Mr. Tokumbo, it looks like, uh, uh, are those your Remita people? Uh, no wonder I can imagine. These ones, they are just like in the sports stadium and they are giving their whole people, you know, the kind of uh, embracement. Thank you. Tokumbo. Please, I will need you to sit close to the moderator uh, because it looks like you are going to be the only man standing on this panel. And then we'll have next uh, to join uh, uh, Madame Antokumbo, we have Ms. Buki um, Oshunke, Senior Product Leader and Marketing Strategist, who will be also be speaking on this panel. And certainly, Mrs. Um, Oremeyi Aka, Chief Customer Experience Officer for InterSwitch is here, as a matter of fact. Please, can you put your hands together for all of our panelists? Great. So, well, you know, the women have a different way of doing it. Uh, Tokuma, did she greet you that way? Or it was just a handshake, but uh, you're your own, as a matter of fact. All right. I wish you all the best. Over to you, madam, for the next 30 minutes. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Okay, my wonderful panelists, good morning again. Yeah, true. I'm looking forward to this um, interesting discussion. So yes, we're talking about the impact of effective marketing on business growth and expansion. I was listening to Yehuda when he was um, giving his keynote address and it was so interesting, you know, when he said, when he talked about the amounts that has been raised um, by the tech sex, we said about how many people can I remember? Say close to three billion dollars right and i know there's a startup we coming up soon yeah so people are looking for more funds grants yes so really the sector what we're we talking about um one major thing yeah it mentioned talents and growth yeah so one thing that i know that tech companies tech organizations are looking forward to is constant growth continuous growth and expansion and that's why I want to discuss, you know, factors around that growth and expansion. And, you know, we have experience with, you know, experienced panelists here who have been there, done that. I want to, you know, to hear some of that, how they've done that in their different organizations. And um, I know they're still doing that so that a lot of us can pick, you know, one or two things that will help us in this. So um, where do I start from? I don't want to, because my dear MC was saying we are doing women empowerment. So let me start from Tokumbo, yes? That is not like we're doing Okay. Thank you, Tokumbo. Now, the, let me ask you this. In the context of Nigeria's evolving digital landscape, what factors do you think contribute to the development of successful and impactful digital products and services? And we know that there's a lot of evolve, you know, evolution going on. So what do you think, what factors do you see you know, contributing to Okay, so um, when we're talking about um, impactful, um, impactful uh, products and services, developing impactful products and services, we have to ask ourselves the meaning of what we mean by impactful product and service. And essentially what we mean is kind of like products and services that impact 
the actual um, consumers or stakeholders involved. Uh, I want to make a very important distinction um, here. Uh, we talk a lot about the customer, right? But it's important to think about it like the stakeholders, and I'll tell you why. Um, so essentially, um, we have different kinds of businesses, right? We have you know, businesses that sell business to business, business to consumer, business to business to consumer. Sometimes when you think about the customer, you tend to think about your customer, right? Um, but, you know, understanding how it impacts the actual product is appreciating how it Im impacts the final consumer, how it impacts other stakeholders like the um, regulators, the people the regulators are protecting, right? Fraud, you have to factor that in because that's a negative impact. You know, so it, it's it's actually understanding the um, kind of the customer base you actually, the customer segment you're talking about, right? Appreciating that customer segment, which is where marketing comes into play. Um, so essentially, you find that um, a lot of the times um, you have a scenario where it's like um, products, build a product now and then market later, right? Which is a big problem. Um, you know, it's there is a synergy to be achieved within um, marketing and products that helps you to actually get that uh, kind of like impactful products. It starts with understanding your customer and then, you, you know, working your way towards actually meeting the customer's needs. Okay, thank you very much. That was interesting. A round of applause for him, please. So, yes, I hear really he talked about stakeholders do not customers they're stakeholders and it has changed you know back in the day you would hear people who build products so it's like a push effect so it's whatever we offer you you have to buy or you have to take but now to come is telling us that no it has changed um you build products with the customers need in mind if i'm right and that's what you said so what is it you're trying to achieve that synergy and you're making sure that you understand the needs of your stakeholders your customers the users, as the case may be. And then when you are building your products, you're making sure that the product actually meets the needs of the customers. So marketing will have helped to, you know, achieve that synergy. Thank you so much. So let me go to my women. I will jump. I'm a non-conventional person, don't worry. So I won't go that way. I'm sure Book is expecting my question. No. <laughs> or me. I know you are, you know, the inter-switch, my inter switch people. I'm trying. Yeah, trying. I told her, I was telling her that I said that we have taken everybody. And she's <laughs> never stop, never stop. That's our motto. So, yeah, this is what you do best and what you've been doing. Let's talk about product leadership. Okay. So, um, for you and maybe for inter switch, what does product leadership mean? You know, to you, to the business, what is product leadership? Because I know that. You've been around for a while. You know, InterSwitch has been around for a while. So what does product leadership to you mean to you? And then how do you think it contributes to business growth? You guys have gotten to where you are now and you're still growing. You almost bought the whole of Okwawo. <laughs> <laughs> so what does product leadership mean to you? Let's hear from you. All right. Product leadership is a strategic pillar. Is it? Product leadership is a strategic concept that you can actually win in the marketplace by deploying products that consumers will con that consumers will crave for, and that will give you a leadership position in your industry. That's the concept of product leadership. But breaking it down, how do you, does a company achieve that? Like we said before, you build anything, you deploy in the marketplace, and consumers must take it. But things have changed. Now, what has made things change? First of all, technology. The fact that the, con the, con the consumer of today, I mean, when my colleague was speaking, we talked of it, the different generations, baby boomers, the consumers of today have a different orientation. They are digital natives. So therefore, for you to even try to win with any form of product, I wanna just talking technology product, across any industry, including automobiles, include, but since we are talking FinTech, we can stay here. You must leverage, the, you must appreciate that the appetite of your consumer in this generation has changed. And so for you to lead in pro with products, you must come from that customer perspective. It must be inborn. You must embed it in your DNA. Now, I'll say to make it easy, there are three things that you consider for a leading product. You consider the functionality, you consider the accessibility, and you consider the emotional 
impact or emotional experience. The functionality is how does it work? You just enter and do this. If it's an app or if it's a car or even if it's a, I mean, whatever product it is, what is the functionality? Now that is the base. That is what gives you a leg, a foot into the door. You must have the basic functions. But to go the next, the next level, you talk of accessibility. How easy is it for that your customers to access that product? So if you look at, again, the school of product leadership, they will tell you a product must be easy to use, easy to reach, easy to access. Of course, technology has driven that. The patience of customers is short, every, it's quick everything. This is a microwave generation. Everything must be quick. Accessibility is critical. Then the last layer is the emotional. What emotional experience does that product deliver? So when you see people, again, we can use the one we know, Apple. People will buy an Apple phone. Why? Because there's an emotional connection. It's not a money issue. Phone is phone. But there's something this does for you on the emotional level. And if you cannot crack that, what you will have is a functional product. And any competition, anybody can come and knock you out of the market if you are only competing on the functional level. So you, you must be able to combine the functionality, the accessibility, the emotional Sean, emotional connection layers, is this flipping? The emotional connection layer for you to deliver a sustainable product by business value. Because what gives a business value is that your customers came today and they will come tomorrow. So customer advocacy is actually the lifeblood of a long-term business. And in FinTech, it's very important. In technology, it's very important because you can easily be thrown out of the market. So that's what I'll say. Those three very important combined with Mac gives you a com thank you gives you a complete picture that will enable you to win sustainably in the long term. Awesome, awesome! A round of applause for her. That was really very insightful. I like that. Yeah, that fact. I like the fact that she said with it's a strategic concept. You know, we've moved from analog, yes? <laughs> we are the digital age or super digital. So it is a strategic concept. And those three key areas, three levers, functionality, accessibility, and that emotional impact. I know it's that emotional impact that keeps you, people, you know, wanting to come back and of course. come back, you know. Yeah, so I, someone like me, I'm very big on user experience. And, you know, like you said, it is tech age. Yeah. You have all sorts of platforms, you know, software. Once it's too difficult <laughs> to navigate, please, you know, I guess that's where the emotional, because functionality, yes, functionality is there yeah. and all that. But in terms of that emotional, the user experience really matters. I guess that's where the emotional impact comes from. And I like the fact that I said for sustainable business growth, uh, because we are not here for, short you know, term. the short term. We are here for the long haul. And that's why you, how many years counting into switch? Into, this is our 21st year. Wow. Into 21st year. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know, I like from something she said, I, I know, you know, it's, yeah, sorry. I'm not an into switch, but I don't know why I'm <laughs> repping into a switch like this, you know, but your colleague was, when he talked to about card fusion, it was so interesting, you know, because I was remembering back in the day when we started collecting cards and you apply for your card, the bank would tell you, come back in, they will call you or something. They will tell you, they will send you a message, yes. And you probably get a message like maybe two weeks after your card is ready, pick up at uh, this branch, you know, and then you will go. And then he said that you can walk into, um, am I right, Mr. Dave? He said you can walk into any location and he said not branch, he said location. Meaning that um, you're trying to also drive financial inclusion. Yes. So you can walk into any location and on the spot, they give you your card and that's awesome. You know, so we can see that we are really evolving. Thank you very much for that, Orimei. Yes, Buki, we are here. Okay. Now, let, let, me, let me come to you. Um, that, I'm really enjoying this. I hope you all are enjoying this. I'm really getting a lot from, you know, this interaction. So, Buki, we are in the digital, I mean, the digital age has started. So, and you were talking about some people saying AI will take over our jobs, take over everything. You know, I'm happy to hear that that's not the case. So, in today's digital age, how can businesses effectively integrate 
both online and offline marketing channels for optimal results. Um, so we know that marketing has, you know, has also moved and is still moving. So how do we integrate both channels, online, offline? At the end of it, we want results, sustainable results. So how do you think we can do that? Okay. Um... One of the things that, um, okay, so first of all, I'm looking at the audience, right? And I believe that the audience is filled with um, a lot of young founders who, um, people who want to start their own technology business, right? And from what I've seen in the industry is that a lot of people are so focused on products, right? They're focused on the, on the actual, you know, building the technology. What I'm seeing more and more is that a lot of people are not thinking marketing, so I'm gonna speak as a marketing professional. That one thing I want to beg you is think marketing first. Think sales first before you even start building because you could spend like a whole, a whole year. Some people, most of their products, it takes about six months to go to market. Some people one year. And then you now get to the end of building the product and find that there's no one out there. You understand who wants to buy what you have been building. So how do you um, integrate online and offline? For me, like, put technology aside, you need foot soldiers. You need a team of people who are out there speaking to customers and onboarding them directly. And I'll tell you why. In Nigeria, the way we work is that there's quite a few products or the, the way we work in shopping is that most people have a long lead to decision making. So you can't just plan a digital marketing campaign today, put it online, put it on Google or Facebook and think that somebody's gonna see you two times click on it and immediately you have a customer. It doesn't kind of work that way. So you need to build your offline team first because customers, people in general in Nigeria need a one-on-one -on -one contact. They need you to be able to explain your product, right? And they need that as a sort of um, proof of concept. If they see your adverts online and they don't actually see foot soldiers in the marketplace, and when I say foot soldiers, you know people wearing your t-shirt, giving out your free branded pen and branded key holder. I've gotten quite a few branded key holders today, <laughs> you know? And which is why I even like conferences like this, because it puts a face to the names of the companies that we've been seeing online. When we come here and we meet them face to face, we know that, oh, these companies actually exist. They actually want to grow. So if I see a company here and I know that you want to grow, then I'm more likely to do business with you because I know that you plan on being around next year, five years time, 10 years time. So integrating online and offline, I would say, believe you me, it may be a technological product, but you need your offline marketing first. What I call foot soldiers, field sales representatives, treat that team like gold. They are the ones who have the contact and the touch point with your customer, right? And one key thing that I always even share is that you need to actually have meetings with those guys on a weekly basis. They are bringing you feedback. You could be in the office in the, you know, your remote um, team, building and building and building. Those guys will tell you, this feature ABC is what your customers are gonna value. This feature XYZ you're building, I beg, teach it. Because I've spoken to the customers and what they're really after is this. So if I were you, put more of your marketing budget towards the field sales, towards the one-on-one -on -one contact, customer experience guys, customer success guys. I onboarded one of the technological products recently and I was so impressed that they have customer success operators assigned to certain, um, and it wasn't even a VIP package. They're assigned to certain regions. I tell you, that girl hounded me every day on WhatsApp till I gave her audience to train me how to use the product. So that you see that app that you downloaded, we want you to be using it. Don't abandon it. And trust me, I'm now using the product. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. In fact, booking, I don't know. Do you work, do you work with workforce? You know? <laughs> She just, you know, she just touched me on my soft spots when she mentioned that you still need the food soldiers because that's what we do in my business. Um, we merge, you know, we integrate both having deployed the food soldiers, you know, that's the, we call them DSs. And then she says that you integrate that with the online marketing. So some people, she says, think marketing first, think sales first. Don't just build your products and then leave that product hanging in the cloud or where is it? Where you've posted it, and you know there is nobody to buy it. So I like that. I like that, um, Buki. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I just got time. I just ask one more set of questions, and then we'll take questions from the floor. Um, I would like you to just give me two minutes in answering these questions. Um, let's try. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I could be here forever. MC, can we stay here? <laughs> okay, Oreme, let's come to you. Yeah. 
Um, let's talk about AI. AI, because if we don't talk about AI, this conference is not over. We can't finish. <laughs> so how is artificial intelligence transforming the landscape of digital marketing? All right, great. So um, I was happy again that he said AI and he said, but however, at the back of AI, there's the human intelligence. So AI is really just a tool. It's a tool that you can leverage and like, so to bring it into the context of digital marketing, AI can help in digital marketing of several aspects. One, content creation, and you can say content fine tuning. So like she mentioned, you send your, you send your foot soldiers out there critical, but as you start to scale, what AI will do for you is that it can take that massive pool of customer feedback and it can help you to run predictive analytics and say, oh, based on feedback coming, these are the kind of, these, you can position these new features. These are the features that are, should be prioritized. It can help you do that analysis faster. So really technology is just something that helps us be more effective. It's not taking away your thinking. It's not taking away your job as long as you are bringing your humanity into that role. So AI helps mark, digital marketing to be effective. But from, I mean, first you must always start with data. Predictive analytics can help us, as I said, you can predict customer behavior. You can predict customer next move. And so you can therefore know which product should I position for this class or this group of customers. Another thing that it can help you do is personalization with customers. Customers love to know that I am not just a number. Even, I mean, we always like it. You download your app and then the next day says, hello, Reme, these are, your, these are the kind of um, movies you like to watch. I'm recommending these ones. How did that, how did Netflix know the kind of movie? It's, it's analytics. It's, it's using data, you know, to predict and to personalize my experience. And I love that as a person. I love that you know me as a Reme and I will stay with you likely. I mentioned content fine tuning for digital marketing. It will help you as a digital marketer. You're not just throwing adverts out there on Google ad, but you're able to actually maybe what words AI can tell you how to fine tune your content buzzwords that will, you know, connect with your customers. So you have a higher return on your marketing investment. And I think that's very, very, very important. Of course, AI will help you, as I said, feedback comes, fine tune that feedback that can go back into product development. What Buki was saying, your foot soldiers are hearing, they are telling, and you can take that, that loop goes back into reiterative product development. AI can help you fast track that from a massive pool of customers, different um, scenarios, customers in different um, phases of life, different countries, different areas. So AI just makes you more effective through those various means. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Predictive analytics. Yes. And, and using the ex you know, example of Netflix, so that's, that's very interesting because yeah, you know, you watch something on Netflix. I'm not an action movie. And then if they, if they throw up action, I'll be wondering where this come from. <laughs> You know, so yes, and then content creation, it helps you to scale. Um, so we know that there is a lot to benefit from AI um, when we talk of, you know, marketing and building our businesses. And that's why it's interesting where we let me you know, merge that with Bookie's response on how we can integrate both that and then, you know, and you know, what we can benefit from AI to achieve sustainable business growth. Thank you. I'm just trying to rush, you know, to rush this. Um, Tokumbo. Yes. Let's see. How do you think businesses adapt and stay competitive in a market where AI is, is increasingly prevalent in the global marketing strategies? Now we're looking at, you know, staying competitive, still using leverage on AI. Yeah. So um, essentially, <clears throat> first of all, I think we need to appreciate the fact that um, AI has been around for a while, right? ChatGPT and stuff like that has just brought it to the fore, which is good. Um, as um, Ore rightly said, um, you know, you know, these these things are we, we use it on a day to day basis. Netflix and whatnot, right? Modern businesses now, particularly marketing departments, have a lot of tools. Most of the tools marketing departments use have are uh, embedding AI to the front. There's such a thing as a product that is not the market is not ready for, right? So this thing has been around for a while. The good thing is that ChatGPT brought it forward, open AI and all that. So you have tools like HubSpot now, right? Survey Monkey and all these kind of tools that people normally use for marketing have brought AI to the front now to the point that it's clear that look for your 
I'm capturing your customer's information, right? Email, chat, whatever, right? I'm, I'm helping you refine that information. I'm allowing you to write blogs, right? And, you know, giving you clear uh, kind of like, I'm letting you know that, look, I'm going to help you to fine tune this content, right? To meet this particular customer's needs. So now loads of the tools out there is now readily available to people. People understand what it means now. You know, you know that you're doing this email. This email this email is, is kind of fine tuned specifically for that customer, right? This blog is fine tuned specifically. You don't maybe need to employ somebody to work with an, some SEO expert now, right? Loads of the tools that you use for your, for your sites and all that, right? you know, will help you kind of like um, sort out the SEO so that it's actually uh, the search engine of optimization. Sorry, I have to make sure I'm not using um, acronyms. Um, so it's actually clear that it's actually, you know, helping you to actually meet your customers specifically. As time goes on, these things become more affordable, right? Um, tools like um, Amazon and our local ones like Konga and Jumia, you know, they use tools like this that actually predict what customers want to buy and suggest it to them, right? So that information, that 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 technology is readily available to loads of marketing companies. Just any any, any tool that a marketing company uses, right, has given them a level of, um, how do I put it now, uh, connection to use AI in one way or the other. And the great thing is that it's it's available on a beginner level and it's available at an expert level as well, you know, so that people can actually benefit from it either way. Okay, thank you. Yes, ChatGPT, the famous ChatGPT. It's made things easier. And there's so many platforms, so many tools. Um, I know for marketing agencies, I'm sure, like from what um, Tokumbo says, in those days, you, you know, marketing agencies, you see the creative people have to go through, you know, think creatively. Now, designs can come out. I do not know they've used AI to achieve those, you know, those the content, the designs. And, you know, and he said a lot of things have been brought to the fore. These things have always been in place. Survey Monkey has been around for a while. But, you know, just a few people, you know, were aware of that. But now we are aware that we can use these things um, to achieve most of the things and he mentioned in every year they say some jobs will be extinct right in the next i'm sure by the end of this year we have see another list of jobs that will go extinct and so come on say that i don't want to say so maybe some seo scm experts in here um, but if you i mean some of these things now people can just pay and the prices go down you know as time goes on you just probably pay ten dollars or less than that and you will get that so watch that space mind that gap my last question now, and then take questions. Let me go back to booking. Book, we are a marketing guru. I know, and you're a marketing expert, okay? So let's talk about just a few of the challenges. What challenges do businesses typically face when transitioning from a concept to a market-ready product? I know you, you've you had experience in this area. What are some of the challenges and how did you overcome them? Um, um, I shared some of the challenges unknowingly when I answered the last question, you know, which is they don't look at the customer, talk to the customer, right? Um, the biggest challenge that I find is not knowing your numbers. So again, I want to really, really appeal directly to the people we have in the audience, young tech founders, young or senior product managers, senior marketing leaders, senior product leaders, know your numbers, know your metrics. The biggest challenge is either not knowing what you can sell in the marketplace, not knowing the number or the amount of profit or revenue you can know, make from your product. Meanwhile, you're spending billions, billions building a product and also not being realistic about how much money. So some people either don't predict how much money they can make from their product or they over, overestimate. So I'm gonna just share with you my favorite, favorite all-time metric so that when you're building, you consider this and know that let this not be a challenge to you. CLV, can we all say CLV? Customer lifetime value. Please calculate that metric before you build any product. It's as simple as, you know what? I charge maybe 50 Naira per transaction on my, on my app. And I know my customer will make maybe 12 transactions a week or 100 transactions a month, and my customer is likely to stay with me for up to five years, do those numbers, 50 times 100 times 12 months times five, you know, five years or whatever, and know realistically how much you can make per customer, how many customers you can, um, you can onboard, and how many customers stay with you in the long run. 
so that we don't go spending a product. And at the end of the day, we end up in the, what they call it, in the graveyard of technology products, in the graveyard of startups. I want every single person that's come here to be successful with their product when they go away from Nigeria FinTech Week 2023. That's why we're all here learning. So please keep that, those three letters in mind, CLV. Please, thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. A round of applause for Buki, please. We've learned that. Please, can we, can we say it again? C L V. Co yeah, that's customer lifetime value. So, you mean you've been calculating that on? <laughs> that's, that's a really insightful, a very insightful um, thing she's told, taught us now. C L V. Please, everybody, just go back and make sure you do those numbers. You know, numbers, that's the language of business, as we say in, you know, in, in consulting numbers, if you don't know your numbers. So there's no point spending so much money from what Bookie is saying in, you know, building that product, the concepts and all that. And then there's, you know, it ends up, as she says, in the graveyard of, of tech products and startups. That won't be our portion in Jesus' name, as you say. Okay, thank you very much. That has been a very interesting discussion. A round of applause for all my panelists, please. A round of applause. Uh, help me, please. Can we encourage them, please? A round of applause. Did you learn something? I've learned a lot. Just by moderating this session, I've learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oremi. Thank you, Buki. Thank you, Tokumbo. I really enjoyed this. Let's see the few questions. All right, certainly, uh, Nika. Th this is a... But uh, I stood here all through and uh, just couldn't imagine that it felt like I was back in a business school because you have to be dealing with very practical things as the case might be. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was so very much um, envious of Tokumbo because I know he was feeling all of the energy. You could hear how Buki was going, and then Aremi he was actually even supporting her. Uh, Tokumbo, don't worry, very soon. I know that you'll be off that podium, but uh, you don't want to leave, I know that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's have questions or comments. One, question number one. Do we have another question or comments? Two, all right. Two, what's the third question? I'm going to take three 